is Rosie and this class is called Jubilee Mindfulness. My classes use movement, mindfulness, and creativity to help students and teachers of all ages and abilities build the three C's. Confidence, compassion, and community. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through a mindfulness activity that's going to help you see how our thoughts really do create our reality. Before we begin this lesson, you're going to need some paper and something to write with. You'll also need a quiet, uninterrupted space to practice this meditation. This activity is going to require some dedication from you, but I promise that when you really commit yourself to what we're doing, it will totally pay off. Also, something to note is that for a lot of this video, you're actually not going to be seeing me. You'll hear my voice, but for a lot of this meditation, I want you to tune into the world around you, wherever you are. So with that said, let's get started. Stand up and begin to walk around the room. Notice the things around you. Take them all in. Notice the shapes, the colors, Notice if there are other people in the room with you. Notice how each step feels on your feet. Now, as you walk, I want you to count the corners of the room. How many corners can you find? Now, begin to notice the things that are blue. Maybe change your direction, switch up your pathway. Now I want you to slow down your walk a little bit. a little slower. Now even slower. Notice how as you slow down, you become hyper aware of the fall that happens between each step. Each step forward depends on you falling, even just a little bit. You're falling just an inch but it's still a fall. With each step, you're trusting that the floor is going to catch you. You are trusting that your legs won't give out. With each step, you are falling. Slow down even more, so much that you cannot fall anymore. Control each step intentionally picking up and placing down your foot with each movement forward. I guarantee you look very weird right now. This is not a normal way to walk. Although, when you really think about it, this way of walking takes out the need for a fall. It's much more controlled, and it could be argued that this way of walking could be safer, but it's also slower, less productive. Just like life, if we want to move forward, we have to fall. We have to allow ourselves to fall forward into new things. We have to take on that risk. On the count of three, I want you to go back to your normal walk. One, two, three. Allow yourself to fall through the air again, allowing your feet to propel you forward. Switch up your pathway again, move somewhere new in the room. Enjoy this forward motion for three more steps and then come to a stop. Standing still with your feet planted firmly on the floor. Take a deep breath in, and if you're comfortable, close your eyes. 
Now, as you stand here with your eyes closed, I'm going to paint a picture for you. I want you to follow along with your imagination, and then I'm gonna ask you to do something. I want you to imagine that you are standing at the edge of a diving board. It's cold, but you don't have a jacket. It's really windy and you can feel the air hitting your back, pushing you forward ever so slightly. You're in your swimsuit, even though it's cold. And then it starts to rain. But it's that kind of rain that is so small and so light that when the wind blows the water into your skin, it just hurts. You look down and notice that your toes are hanging over the edge of the board. And you can see that the pool below you is not filled with water. Instead, it's filled with razor blades. One step forward and you fall off of the diving board into the pool of sharp blades waiting to cut open your skin. Take a step forward. Go ahead and open your eyes. Now, I've done this exercise with classes for years, and I always see the same thing. So, I'm willing to bet that this is how you stepped forward. So my question for you is, why? <laughs> you knew that there was no real pool in front of you, right? You knew that you weren't just magically transported to a different place the second that your eyes closed. But still, the story that you created in your mind affected the way that you moved. Our minds are so powerful. The stories that we create in our minds tell our bodies how to act. What we think literally affects the way that we step forward into the world. The stories that we tell ourselves about our reality literally affect the way that we step forward in life. So now, I want you to take a moment to journal about this experience. What stories are in your mind that are preventing you from stepping forward into your life with confidence? Maybe it's something that you tell yourself when you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see. Or when you struggle on a test. Those are the stories I'm talking about. Those are the stories that literally change the way we move. So take a few minutes to write about it.
Go ahead and bring your journaling to a close, and I want you to stand up again. I'm going to lead you through a different scenario this time, so go ahead and close your eyes. I want you to imagine you're standing barefoot in warm sand. It's soft between your toes. There's a light breeze blowing through your hair and warm sunshine hitting your face. You take a deep breath in and you can smell the salt of the ocean. In front of you, there's an open beach of warm sand leading you all the way to the water. Step forward. All right, open your eyes. So my guess is that this time you stepped forward a lot more confidently. Changing the story in your mind changed the way that you stepped forward in life. As you move through life this week, I'm going to challenge you to start to notice those stories that show up in your head. Are those stories helping you? Or are those stories harming you? Thank you so much for taking some time to connect your inner self today. I encourage you to continue to journal about this experience. Talk to your friends and family about it and share all of your discoveries. I'll see you next time.